so uh, before you start the history uh, before you start uh, so before you start the history it's important to know how alert your patient is because you know a neurological history needs an uh, needs an alert patient you need to have a consent from the patient and the family you need to have an insight that the patient knows about the symptoms for example if a patient is having seizures uh, is he the right person to talk about his symptoms and then there's confidentiality so you know uh, we ha- we all have performers in a hospital and may, uh, it's a standard performer which talks about age gender what occupation uh, where where is the patient located handedness is one side if you're looking at patients who had who have cranial issues uh, whether he's right handed or left handed what is the presenting illness what is the symptom or that uh, that is presented with is there any past history medical or surgical you uh, is there any personal history uh, for example any toxin exposure family history and treatment history you all, you guys m- will all know this so what is the goal of the history the goal of the history is to identify the region of the nervous system that is responsible for the symptom system so you identify the site of the lesion and you identify what is the nature of that lesion and then you order investigations based on your history and examination so basic description for any symptom that the patient comes up with is a site for example let's talk about the most commonest symptom that the patient will present is with is headache or maybe a leg pain so it's site the severity of that symptom the onset whether it was acute subacute or chronic uh, the duration frequency the factor that uh, precip- uh, that aggravates the pain or the, is there any relieving factors and the time of recurrence so this is a list of uh symptoms that a patient most mostly present with so it's a long list uh so uh, the most common uh, presentation is headache so when a patient uh sorry so when a patient present with headache you're uh, interested to know whether it's a localized headache or is it a generalized headache how bad is the sever- severity is it like the worst headache of his life what was the onset was it gradual or was it sudden how frequent is the head- headache is there any relationship with time what is the character um uh, is it a precip- uh, for example is it precipitated by coughing for example a suboccipital headache precipitated by coughing would uh, point towards a s- certain disease is there any relieving factors is it associated with vomiting visual disturbance so the next uh, common uh, uh, symptom that patient present is visual symptoms uh, which can present in a uh, in a variety of manner it can be impairment of vision it could be in one eye or it can it can be both eye there could be diplopia and uh, patients uh, can also have hallucinations a patient may also present with history of loss of consciousness uh, this could be recent uh maybe due to trauma uh it could be a sudden collapse due to intracranial hemorrhage or maybe a subarachnoid hemorrhage patient can have uh, seizures and you know they uh, can have loss of consciousness after that uh, seizures it could be intoxication uh they, they, then they can be metabolic and psychiatric reasons so uh, uh one of the most important uh, symptoms that patient may mostly present with is, is seizures so when uh, you're looking at a patient with seizures you need to ask these questions first uh, you need to identify does the patient has the insight if the patient has insight then you can take the history from the patient or or the attendant so you know uh, uh, you you need to ask whether uh, how was the description uh, what happened at the onset of the fit was was there an aura or not how long was uh, was the seizure how was this how how long did it last it was it a generalized seizure was it a localized seizures what was the what was the condition of the patient after the after the seizure did he has post ictal uh, drowsiness and post ictal symptoms because a lot of a lot of things can mimic seizures syncope can mimic seizures so a syncope patient with a syncope or a hysteria uh, uh, mimicking seizures will not have post ictal drowsiness or post ictal headache so was there any continence issues uh, did he by this tongue what was the frequency of seizures um, uh, what medication is the patient on and what is the compliance with the uh, with the medications uh, is there a change in seizure pattern uh, the next uh, issues that patient also present is with speech disorders and it's a very complex uh, thing to look at uh, normally when a patient present with speech disorders you look at what is the onset how how long it's been there so uh, a speech disorder could be a difficulty in articulation which is a dysarthria 
or it can be a difficult in expression you know where the patient understands but cannot express so what kind of what kind of uh, dysphagia or aphasia would that be residents and which area would that be locus and uh, when there's uh, so comprehension jo hoti hai what do you understand by the word comprehension so uh, so a broker's aphasia comprehension how would, uh, would will patient have comprehension express and what about vernikis sorry so then you can have motor disorders which means you can have uh, motor disorders can present in a variety of manner it can be uh, lack of coordination balance or it could be just weakness uh, unilateral or bilateral weakness which could be progressive or static it the, the 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 weakness it's very important when a patient present with weakness to know if it's proximal or distal uh, and uh, if, if it's painful or painless and what's the uh, variations uh is there any uh, uh involuntary movement for example motor neuron disease will have involuntary movement like twitching jerks is there any wasting uh is there any stiffness and uh one of the most important thing that we ignore is the gait uh we should always examine a uh, gait of the patient then we have sensory disorders which can present in a variety of manner it could be pain tingling sensation loss uh patient may present with neuropathic pain and ulcers so uh, uh so uh, uh one thing that uh, is different in a neurological history is we survey we survey all symptoms we start with the history of presenting complaint then uh, we survey uh, the lobes then we survey the cranial nerves if this is a patient with an endocrinological issue we do an endocrinological survey for example if you're looking at a patient with a pituitary you will you will want to know if this patient is married does he have kid you know uh, and you will do the endocrinological survey and uh, so then you will move on to the cranial nerve survey so you know you you will ask questions very specific uh, which will check each of your nerves and uh, you know there's a series of questions i'm not going to go through this to save time and then you want to change if uh, you want to check if there's any change in his mental uh, state is it short term is it long term uh, does the patient knows about his orientation is he properly dressed is he for example uh, it's very easy to miss uh, a neglect for example if you do a brain surgery and the patient has a neglect uh, you may you may take it as a hemiparesis but it's actually a neglect uh, autonomic disorders is also uh, are also important a patient with seizures may present with sweating you know uh, different areas have different auras and uh, you can have bladder dysfunction uh, so uh, one uh, one of the most important thing is also sphincter control and they present in a variety of fashion for example if a spinal cord or a compression or a trauma may present with urinary retention a damage to the frontal lobe may present as loss of awareness or bladder distension uh, um, uh pons or spinal cord may present with frequency urgency urgent incontinence and low motor neuron palsy will can present as, as overflow incontinence so i'm going to move on to the next part of my uh, pre uh, presentation which is localization so why is it important to localize a neurologic uh, a, a lesion it's important because you want to know which area is impaired which what is the site of the nervous system that has been affected you want to know you want to figure out what's the etiology so that you can order uh, ancillary uh, you can order uh, investigations um as a general hypothesis most of the neurosurgical diseases have focal lesions causing focal symptoms uh, while on the other hand uh, most of the neurological diseases are uh, basically diffuse and may have bilateral uh, or or maybe have uh, multiple body segments that involve so a, a neuro axis a neural so a neural axis starts from uh, you can you know start distally or uh, it, proximally it starts from the cortex from the cortex it goes to the subcortical the white matter tracts that's so much talked about these days then it goes on to the brain stem the cerebellum the infratentorial then it's the spinal cord root peripheral nerve neuromuscular junction and muscle so when you examine patient you should be able to address every uh, division of the neuro axis uh, based on the given history as 
so again that's the sequence uh, uh, here i've like we started distally muscle going on to the neuromuscular junction peripheral nerve spinal cord brain stem deep matter tract and then going on all the way to the cortex so whenever you're looking at a patient uh, it's important to know if it's uh, whether this lesion is upper motor neuron or lower motor neuron so upper motor neuron uh, uh, where is uh, the upper motor neuron where does it start and where does it end i mean start from the cortex that i can tell you where does it end <coughs> where does it end in the spinal cord sorry which limb d12 l1 d12 and low motor neuron where does it start and where does it end so let me make it easier the upper motor neuron means uh, cortex white matter tracts so even uh, uh, spine uh, maybe uh, you uh, an upper motor neuron if you have an upper motor neuron lesion cervical and dorsal spine d12 tuck you'll have involved but a low motor will be involved l2 l1 or l2 till s1 you all get you all understand it's simple mhm mm mm. motor for example you can, for a facial weakness there's upper motor there's an upper motor neuron type and there's a low motor neuron type as well so what what is the difference between an upper motor neuron facial weakness and a low motor neuron facial weakness for let, yeah and and the upper motor neuron you may have sparing yeah sparing so the way i remember the so, so, so i used to be very as a resident i used to be very confused and every time somebody will ask me a question i would remember a patient with a cp angle you know the facial weakness that he will have will uh, a low motor he will have the whole side involved and that's how i used to differentiate whether you know so so you know you need to uh, localize what level is involved and so localization is uh, precise for the low motor neuron but as you ascend the localization kinds of uh, you know it it is not that precise uh, and uh, even uh, it changes over time so just to save time so you you all already know that plegia is paralysis paresis is weakness you have monoplegia you have hemiplegia you have paraplegia you have uh, uh, you know uh, sorry let's see so you have uh, brachial diplegia which is uh, loss of motor function both upper extremity you have facial diplegia which is lower uh, loss of motor function the lower half of the body and then uh, peripheral nerve disorders basically basically they present with uh, like any peripheral neuropathy that is loss in in mainly distal distally and affect feet and hands in a glove and stocking distribution so uh, then uh, again uh, upper motor neuron palsy versus the lower motor neuron palsy so all uh, all examination starts with an inspection so if on inspection if the patient has atrophy uh, if he has wasting or he, if you um, uh, if if you observe any fasciculation though that is points toward a low motor neuron lesion whereas when you start exa uh, examining the patient uh, you, if you check tone if the tone is increased or uh, if the reflexes are uh, exaggerated if the patient has a clonus or a hoffman sign uh, if there's a upgoing plantar so that all points to an upper motor neuron lesion you all know that right so then again uh, so uh, uh, so starting from the hemisphere till the cerebral peduncle uh, the patient will have contralateral weakness and if the uh, and a facial weakness if he has facial weakness that will be on the same side uh, below the cerebral peduncle uh, in the brain stem he will have a uh, uh, cranial nerve palsies on one side and hemiparesis on the other side you all get that uh, spinal cord uh, if, if if it is a cervical spine lesion it can pr present with quadriparesis if it is a thoracic spine lesion it can cause with either paraplegia or paraparesis if it is a nerve root it can just present with a root distribution if uh, it's a, it's if if it's one more than one root it can present as a polyneuropathy uh, or more than or or a, or, a, or a plexopathy where more than one roots are involved you all know the dermatomes yeah I, i don't need to go through this right and you all know your myotomes you know so i'm just going to skip this because of time you all know uh, the root values for your jerk uh, so so if a root is lesioned uh, the, uh, the 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 weakness will be in a myotome 
and the sensory uh, abnormality will con will be confined to that myotome and if it if that nerve represents a reflex that reflex will be de decreased so uh, sometimes there are there are paradoxical reflexes and uh, one of the most uh, common one that we see is the inverted uh, or paradoxical reflex uh, so when you jerk uh, when you do a bicep jerk the, the bicep tendon is tapped but there's no bicep jerk but there's a uh, but the tricep uh, contract so this this is basically when there's involvement or root and spinal cord both uh, uh, a thing called right radiculomyelopathy so uh, so coming on to diffuse uh, uh, when how do you differentiate a, a single uh, uh, nerve root from a diffuse is uh, the weakness will be distal this is more uh, going on to uh, neurological uh, point. This, uh, the dysthesias will also be distal. Then again, coming to neuropathies, it can be a mononeuropathy or a polyneuropathy. Uh, so neuromuscular junction, uh, when you, uh, uh, so, you know, uh, obviously you all neurosurgery residents and you will not see myasthenia gravis or any uh, other issues like that. But if you do see one, one thing that you will notice that these patient, th these patient gets fatigued on repetitive examination. So if you if there's a patient where you know you uh, tell them to do something, they have proximal weakness in upper extremity, and if you tell them to do commands repeatedly, they'll get fatigued. So we uh, also look. Uh, we also get patient with mu uh, muscular uh, issues, and uh, it can be a weakness, muscle wasting. Uh, neurological examination uh, can be normal uh, because. Uh, because the, uh, it, it's preserved till until late in the disease, and uh, they can present in a variety of fan, uh, uh, manner and mostly involve proximal muscles more than the distal muscles. So that, this is a list of uh, diseases that uh, can involve the muscle, the neuromuscular junction, the peripheral nerve that we already talked about right now. So none of the diseases are neurosurgical though. So coming on to the lobar, um, so a frontal lobe lesion on the left side, how will it present? Residents, sorry, personality changes. It's written. Sorry, Uranian continence. Left side. If it's on the left side, then speech, speech issues or something. You, know, you can have Broca's aphasia. Uh, Premotor. Uh, you can. Uh, you can have weakness on one side. So, uh, what's the what's the function for su uh, supplementary motor area? SMA. Which side? So contralateral motor planning. Uh, if it's a temporal lobe, uh, if it's a dominant side, what features can patient present with? Sorry? Comprehension will be lost. One key is a And what else? You can have uh, homo, uh, you can have quadrantopia. Uh, you all know what the uh, Gutsman syndrome is. I hope. Uh, yeah. So a parietal lobe can present with apraxias, contralateral, uh, condenopia. An occipital lobe will present with heminopia, contralateral. So this is the homunculus. You all know this. Uh, medially is the uh, foot and the leg and uh, the face area and the hand is uh, laterally. So uh, we have already talked about this. The, the facial weakness of the upper motor neuron is on the same side Then the lesion is above the pons. And likely the side is either motor cortex, coronal radiata, or the internal capsule. Uh, a little bit about the weakness. Um, if the if, um, this 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 is uh, this is in correspondence with the homunculus. If the face and arm is more weak, so the face and arm is laterally, so the lesion is more lateral. If the leg is involved, the the lesion would be paracentral or medial. Then we have uh, uh, spinal cord uh, uh, transactions. We have uh, central cord syndrome. How does a patient with central cord syndrome present with? Upper limb weakness more than left leg. What about brown sequence? And what about uh, vibration in position sense? They're intact. So uh, a brown sequence will present with a loss of power and a loss of joint and position set occurring on the same side and temperature and pain on the opposite side. 
so uh, cervical uh, coming on to the cervical spine a patient with cervical uh, malopathy or a cervical uh, brachialgia would present with uh, uh, either uh, pain or weakness in the upper limbs or lower limbs he can present with increased tone he can present with the babinski sign he can present with unity tension and loss of position sense a uh, patient with a, thora a thoracic spine lesion would present with either paraplegic or, or paraplegia in the lower limb he would have increased tone he would have all upper motor neuron signs so how do you differentiate between a conus and a cauda uh, how do you how do you differentiate between conus and cauda is uh, issues residents mm -hmm. they are symmetrical they uh -huh. Asymmetrical. So conus is symmetrical. Uh, corda is asymmetrical. What about uh, pain and uh, un unary or bowel issues? Which does which which issue does uh, have early unary issues? Yeah. And, and what about conus? What is early? Ba bowel bladder symptoms are uh, is early uh, is compromised early. So you all understand this the lesion between conus and and you all know what conus and corda is, right? I hope you all know that. So we already done that. Uh, I'm just going to skip through this. We already discussed that. Coming on to the gate, um, if you ask the neurologist, you know what is one thing that you know two things that you do well that you can examine the whole patient while touch, even without even touching is talking to the patient and making them walk. So one of the most important thing is gait. So there's a wide variety of it. It can be a hemiparetic gait where the one arm uh, where the weakness is adducted, and patient has difficulty walking. A spastic gait that we see in uh, dorsal spine or cervical spine is where you know they're scissoring. A cerebellar uh, gait is white stance, can't walk in a straight line. A Parkinson gait is slow, stiff, you know, small steps. And uh, for example, uh, patient which which we see with normal pressure hydrocephalus. So they, uh, so even their gait is bot based, and you know uh, when they turn, they turn on a single point. You know, I think this this is all. Thank you. I hope there's no questions. <laughs>